Hi everybody, welcome back to The Chomp Show, brought to you by the Restaurant Association. I'm your host, Sebastian Kahn, and today we are in Redondo Beach, California, here at Chronic Taco, what was inspired by local taquerias and now is a global sensation. We have the fortunate opportunity of meeting with the founder, Randy, today, so let's check it out. All right, we are here joined by founder Randy. How are you, man? So tell me, how did Chronic Tacos get started? Good question. Well, back 22 years ago, I was really hungry and I live in Newport Beach and there was no taqueria right across the street. So a spot came up, we wanted good tacos. I grew up in Orange, we brought that over to uh, Newport Beach and yeah. that's how we started. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, can we try some? Let's, let's eat. Let's do you it. Hungry? Yes, sir. Good. Before we jump back into the action, I wanna take a quick moment to highlight one of our amazing sponsors, Simply by Ultimetrics. Simply is a payroll platform designed for restaurants of all sizes. If you're running a restaurant, cafe, or any growing business, Simply makes managing payroll easy. From automating payroll and tax filing to tracking employees in real time, Simply's got you covered. Plus, their easy to use interface means you don't need to be an expert to get things done. It flows your timekeeping records directly into their platform, so no more manual entries. Employees can also check their pay stubs request time off, and manage benefits all from one platform. So, if you want a payroll solution that's fast, simple, and reliable, check out Simply by Altimetrics at... Now, back to the show. Give me a nice heaping spoon of Spanish rice right here. A heaping spoon of Spanish rice. Perfect. Yeah. Now uh, go a little bit more. A little bit more. We're chronic tacos. We like yeah. them big. Yeah, we do. Perfect. I usually go with some black beans. Drain them out a little bit and make them all fresh and nice. Boom. Look at that. And then we're going with our surf and turf. So we're going to put some steak on there. Ooh, that smells really nice. And then we've got some shrimp. Top fresh it off. off. Cheese. Next component here. Oh, look at that. And we're gonna do our Baja style. So now I use our secret Baja sauce. Spicy. And then with our Baja style, we do some fresh pico de gallo. <sighs> Look at that. Look at that. That looks yummy. And then we top it off with some cabbage. Some cabbage. And now I'm gonna show you how to roll. The next one is on your own. Oh gosh. So okay. we're gonna go like this. Like kind of get it all in the center. In there. We're gonna fold over and you gotta get it all in. Oh my goodness. And okay. that is gonna be your surf and turf burrito. Today we are here with the newest franchisee and member of the Chronic Tacos family, Cynthia at Redondo Beach in the newest location. Cynthia, tell me, what got you into becoming a franchisee and wanting to be part of the Chronic Tacos family? This is my retirement plan I love right it. here. And so. I chose Chronic Tacos because the food is off the chain. Off the chain. Third generation recipes, the, I just love all the seasonings that they use because yeah. it has taste. I like food with taste. All right, guys, so we've got some fantastic looking food. We've, we've made the fish taco. We made the Cynthia Special. I, I'm gonna call it the Cynthia Special, not Cali Custom. I'm assuming this is your favorite. It is. Yeah? It is. Okay. It is absolutely my so favorite. So what, what are the differences in that then? between the, the Classic Cali and the Cynthia Special? Well, the Classic Cali um, only comes with the carne asada. Okay. But I add the beer battered shrimp to it, mm. which makes it better to go I'm with the french fries. And what's your favorite? Oh, my favorite? I love the Cali burritos, uh, carne asada tacos, again, the mahi-mahi fish tacos. Um, those are my go-to. Oh, and the El Pastor tacos, Ooh, for sure. Yeah. Stepping back and peeling back the curtain on Chronic Tacos, what made you decide to make Chronic Tacos a franchise? Um, you know, when we opened our first store in 2002 in Newport Beach, 
Um, you know, we it was a big hit and uh, we opened up a second store in Huntington Beach. Again, you know, it was a line out the door. We were really excited and a lot of people kept calling us saying, hey, I want to open a Chronic Tacos. Um, we wanted to prove, you know, have a proven method, so we opened up a few more. I really wanted it to be worldwide, and yeah, we're over 30 locations. Uh, we're here in California, we're in Washington, Oregon, Japan, Canada, all over the U.S., all the way to Florida, and Hawaii, too. What have been some of the, the major challenges in kind of expanding mm -hmm. Chronic Tacos from one that single location in 2002 yeah. to here we are? 22 years later. You know, I, I think there's a, there's a couple, you know, challenges in any kind of business. In restaurants, it's, the key is location. You know, getting the right location is key. So we don't push locations. We really wait to find the right location that meets the demographics that, mm -hmm. you know, we know that will be a good location. Um, and then second, of course, is operations. Finding the right operators, uh, having good franchise partners is key. So when we do the franchise, uh, you know, validation and, and going through it, we're very particular on who we partner with um, because we want to have a good experience no matter where you are, right. whether it's Florida or California. Um, and then third, it's always making sure that the distribution's in line, all of our products are there. Uh, we're constantly tasting, trying new products, you know, making sure produce is fresh, local. Um, so it's really important for us when we open up a new store in a new location yeah. is making sure the distributor carries all of our products to our specs. Um, and, and that's pretty much, you know, yeah. how we roll. How do you, across the board, in terms of across the world, keep those operating costs down and keep it, keeping it so affordable and accessible to the masses and help? Yeah, them? that's a good question. And, you know, when you have, uh, you know, uh, a lot of locations you have buying power. So right. it's important to us because we're uh, a franchise system uh, to get good contracts with vendors and uh, the farms mm -hmm. and making sure that we've get, you know, better pricing than a street account or like a, a, a just a one store. Right. Uh, so, it, but that's a huge part of it. And then always staying in line with, you know, competition and making sure that, you know, our prices aren't more or less we we're always competitive with everybody else absolutely yeah, but you have to keep it in line you know yeah totally and cynthia have there been any challenges with opening and starting this brand new location for me it's very important for me to stay on top of my cooks because i want the quality and the taste of my food to be on point every time you know versus having differences and, yeah. and stuff and so um and their recipes make it easy, you know, because we start off yeah. with a uh, good flavor. And so these recipes, mm -hmm. these are third generation recipes from? Uh, from the Bonilla family. So it was uh, one of my first partners when we opened. Um, he's retired now, but uh, it was his uh, great grandmother's third generation recipes wow. from Mexico. And, uh, and and that's how it started. We And we haven't changed them one bit. One final question before yeah. we get into yeah, this yeah. beautiful food, but you've created a, a a brand here that is super interesting because you've been placed, or you're in different countries. That's something that not many people can say or do, frankly. Is there any differences in doing business in these different countries other than the United States? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, even going to Japan, uh, tacos, when we first got there, wasn't a big thing. So you really had to uh, kind of like train the culture on how to even eat a taco and you know, what's in a taco. And you know, when we go into like a new country, like a, in Japan, you know, you got to tweak the menu too, to fit that culture. And and, here, yeah, yeah of so, you know, we, you know, we have a Wagyu taco. Uh, there's different things that we did. Um, and it was also, you know, educating uh, the consumer and, yeah. and understanding where the meat comes from, but everything is spec the same. It's steak. You can get El Pastor. You can still get your carn carnitas. Um, we really, really wanted to bring that California inspired taco shop to Japan. Japan. And, um, you know, in the beginning it was all, like, we were there doing all this media and stuff and yeah. explaining, like there was instructions how to eat a taco. <laughs> and uh, I kind of love that. Though. It was really cool. And, and, and the people in Japan are amazing. So it was a, uh, a really good turnout and, and we have a couple stores there and they're expanding more and yeah. uh, it, it, it works and um, you know we're excited to go to other countries and, and keep on filling up the US. Absolutely. 
Hey guys, I just wanted to take a quick second to mention restaurantassociation.com. Membership is free. This is a great resource for anyone in the restaurant industry. You can find job postings, restaurant advice, different things associated with the restaurant industry. So definitely check that out. But in the meantime, back to the episode. So Randy, I mean, starting off, why do people love chronic tacos? You've got over 30 locations now around the world in so many different states. Why do you think people keep coming back for more? The food is the first, you know, you gotta have really good food for people to wanna come back and talk about it. Yeah. And, uh, and then you have the service side of it and keeping the store clean and the cleanliness and um, having fresh food, uh, making it how you like it. Um, you know, with me, I'm a, I'm a very picky eater. I want certain things on my, on my tacos and my burritos. So yeah. um, I really wanted it to be where we'll make it how you like it. And uh, you know, it's customized. How did you guys come up with the name? So Chronic was part of the family name, but it was spelled different. Um, but also Chronic to us means the best. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna want more, uh, you know, it's, uh, you, you're gonna keep on coming back. And For sure. um, you know, we, we always wanted the, the Chronic to be the best tacos around. And yeah. so I thought it was a good fit. I think it is. Uh, after what we've had today and the past, I've, I think it is. Okay, 100%. thank you, thank you. Um, what marketing campaigns that you have you guys run that have shown to be really successful in this demographic of Southern California? Well, it's funny because we started in 02 and things have changed so much mm -hmm. in, in marketing from when it used to be postcards going to your mailbox, you know, and then all of a sudden now it's social media and, you know, social media is a huge, huge play in the marketing field from TikTok to Instagram. And, um, you know, we've got a big following, um, you know, we're constantly uh, doing content and, and staying relevant in, in, in that, you know, social media world. Um, but a lot of it's marketing. We still do the grassroots and the, yeah. the flyers and, and uh, you know, in the neighborhoods. But, you know, we like to sponsor shows. We're really big in the music industry and, and being at shows and concerts. Um, and, um, you know, and our, our partner with Wee Man and, and just, you know, who we partner with and whether it's athletes, actors. Um, but the social media part is a, is a huge part of marketing and, yeah. and staying on it and, and, and providing good content. And so you think social media is probably the biggest? Yes. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, huge. You would mention concerts, you know, shows like that. That's kind of out there, not your conventional, if you will, marketing. When you talk, when you say that, are you bringing trucks with you? Yeah, to, we've to done shows? it all. Yeah, so, you know, we'll sponsor a show where we're on the 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 big screens um you know we do we're in angel stadium that's another big marketing thing for us locally um you know doing bounce backs uh, you know if you're in the stadium at angels um you know but the music side yeah we do the vip backstage we'll have trucks at shows wow. um uh, you know they'll a lot of shows will, or festivals will have you know a full food area and yeah. you know we'll be out there and doing our thing but um you know, yeah, it's 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 important to us to be involved in what people enjoy in life, and um, you know, when they see a chronic tacos, yeah, they're like, totally. "Oh, I have heard of them." <laughs> and also, you're you're establishing a community, right, around totally. yeah, this yeah. fantastic food. Yeah, yeah, you build a following. Yeah, I love that. Being a restaurant owner, founder, 22 years now. Growing up, did you think, you know, what I want to be a restaurant owner? I'm gonna do this. This is what I'm going. This is my path. You know, it, it's a funny story. When I was nine years old, I made a restaurant on my driveway where I grew up. And I took all my mom's little TV tables yeah. and chairs from the garage. And I set up a whole restaurant. I was about nine or 10 years old and I used all her groceries. <laughs> I made a menu and, um, and I served the whole neighborhood. So we did a whole lunch and my mom came home went to make us dinner and there was no groceries left. And so my mom's like, where's all the groceries? I'm all, mom, I sold them. I, I did a restaurant on the driveway. And you know, I might've made $13 and uh, my mom's like, you know, that's a hundred dollars for the groceries. Uh, 
So, uh, you know, I always knew uh, I love service. I love, uh, I really enjoy making people uh, happy and giving them good yeah. food and yeah. talking and, and being, you know, a part of it uh, was something that I, I knew from a young age that I, I wanted to do. So, yes, I, I, I think back in the day, it was kind of already implanted in me for some reason. And, um, and now here we are. Here we are. Randy, having established Chronic Tacos in 2002 and being in the restaurant industry for well over 20 years, what have been some of those the, the setbacks and the lessons that you've learned from those those setbacks and those the successes, the challenges? Can yeah. you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, um, the biggest thing is is not growing too fast. You know, um, making sure you take your time, your diligence, you know, and, and, and on locations and operators, uh, you know, that's the biggest thing. People start to grow too fast and then, um, you know, the recipes get away from them, the distributors. So, you know, for me, my biggest thing or my opinion is take it slow, you'll grow yeah. and, uh, and you'll grow with it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I, th I think that's, you know, keeping it close to home so you don't lose control. And yeah. like we had talked about, it, that keeps, I think, that community, that family feel as well. Yeah, yeah. So if you could go back and tell your younger self 22 years ago who was starting Chronic, what advice would you give um, your younger You know, self? I, I always say, you know, in any business, you need a good mentor. and. And, um, you know, I had a really good mentor that was in the restaurant business and franchising for many, many years. And I think that's a big key to success is, you know, um, is getting advice from people that have been there and done that. You know, restaurants are, uh, you know, most restaurants fail. And, yeah. and that's why we provide a franchise system. So you have the systems in place. We teach you how to do things. And I think that's a big uh, plus for, yeah. uh, especially in the restaurant world, is having a franchisor that's been around and understands the business so you can grow as a of franchisee. Course. I love that. And then uh, fun one. What is a moment in the past 22 years at whatever location where you were just like, I love what I do? Is there a moment? Yes. Um, sure. So when we opened our first store in 2002 in Newport Beach, we just opened the doors. Um, no marketing, we had no idea what we were doing, and um, you know, it was, it was steady, but nothing crazy, yeah. and then back in the day, they used to have newspapers, and uh, <laughs> uh, we, got, What's that? we got written up in a newspaper, in, in the local, the Daily Pilot, and it was crazy to see the response from a write-up. So we had a write-up in this newspaper, and the next day we had a line out the door. And I was like, what is going wow. on? And then I realized this article came out. And it was a rad big article, picture of me and Dan holding tacos. Uh -huh. And um, it, it was that moment I knew we had something. Wow. And, and what was that next level from, from like the day one? Yeah, uh, you know, it was, it was opening up a couple more stores, seeing that, you know, just cause I lived in Newport, I live in Newport. So yeah. opening up there, the locals kind of knew me. So it was, you know, going into another city and testing it and making sure yeah. that our concept works. Right. Um, and that you can move out of where you started. Right. And so we started, slowly started branching out, opening up more of our own corporate stores and then we're like, let's franchise this. I love that. So, you know, from the first time you did design where we had stickers everywhere and it was very, you know, uh, punk rock and just uh, uh, <laughs> taqueria where we we just felt when you, you know, every so many years you really need to look at your design, your concepts, your competition, what's coming, what's going and staying irrelevant in this market, but you do need to evolve your styles. You know, right. uh, our, you know, we bring in our, our, our graffiti guy. He's been doing this for a long time, but you know, we started with, uh, you know, not so much party <laughs> stuff, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I think it's very important to evolve your look and to make sure you still stay cool and relevant in this industry. Cause you know, we've, we've got customers 
I say from two years old to 80. So um, you've got to stay cool with everybody, but you also need to evolve your style and your look and make sure you're still you, Yeah. but you've got to update things. And for you know, sure. it's really important for us to, you know, go through stores and say, okay, we should update this. Let's put a new sign in, let's do a new mural. And it goes even to the back of house, like to equipment and always, you know, you, you know you've got to, you know, keep it up to date. I like that. Are you expecting like an ROI when you're investing in the properties? Or you Absolutely. So anytime you look at any business, you're going to want to know what your ROI is, your return on investment. So, you know, we try to make the build outs as economical as possible. We want your ROI as, as quick as possible. Um, so yes, when we look at design, we have a, you know, we set a, a, a perimeter, a budget, you know, it, yeah. if it's a second generation restaurant, it's going to cost a little bit less. The hood's in place, the grease trap's in place. Well, the bathrooms are there. We just got to redo them. So, um, you know, we always are trying to do the most, you know, affordable. So the guys, yeah. you know, you're not in it for a ton of money because you can go nuts on a restaurant. Of course. You can spend a million dollars quick. You know, we keep it around that, you know, three to 500 grand to open up a restaurant. And um, uh, so yes, we are constantly looking at that and where we think you should put your money into um, on the build out. Like, yeah. you know, do you want to do a, the mural and, and how big's the wall or, um, you know, the tables, the furniture, the lighting, aesthetics, right. everything. everything. Um, you know, it goes into our budget and, um, you know, you pick the ones that are the big ones and then, you know, you start getting some extras if you got them. Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, I mean, we're talking about this mural here you, you said you have a graffiti guy. Yeah, his name's Tuzer. Uh, he's a famous graffiti artist, um, does a ton of stuff uh, all over LA, everywhere. We fly him out. He, we went to Japan, did Japan. Um, he's oh. on, on us, he's flown all over the world, even though he does his own stuff too. But, um, but yeah, he's been with us for years and you know, we've evolved with him. You know, yeah. From the first time he painted his first mural, at the beach, a beach scene, you know, to, you know, uh, you know, more graffiti style, and and uh, you can see how artwork just evolves over the years. Yeah, um, to, I kind of, you know, I love that. I love this art meets the restaurant eats yeah. food. Yeah. I, it's really beautiful. I mean, this is really stunning. Yeah, you, you have the space here, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's a um, perfect mural wall. How did you meet this guy? This is super interesting. Uh, I, I believe I remember looking him up he I think he did one of my friend's stores mm -hmm. um, I met him such a nice guy well it's stunning and I'm thank definitely you. thank you definitely impressed I mean I love it I love cool. it well uh, is there any last final things you want to say to like our audience and, and let the people know like what's coming next for chronic tacos yeah so we're opening up more locations uh, if anybody has franchise information they need they can reach out on our website um, and hit franchising uh, we're expanding all over the U.S. Yeah. And uh, go eat some tacos. Yes, sir. Chronic tacos. Well, Randy, thank you so much thank for you. having thank us Thank you for here. coming. It was fantastic. I had a great time. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode of The Chomp Show here at Chronic Taco in Redondo Beach. I'm your host, Sebastian Kahn. And if you want your restaurant to be featured on this show, click the link in the description below. I appreciate you guys. It has been a fantastic day talking with Cynthia and Randy about what makes Chronic Tacos so special. And I'll tell you one thing, it's this surf and turf burrito right here. So I'm gonna try it. This is, they use the um, sauteed shrimp instead of the beer battered shrimp in this one. So I'm excited to see you taste the difference. Let's get it. Oh, wow. Wow. The flavor of that sauteed shrimp with the carne asada is like phenomenal. Y'all, there's 30 different locations of chronic tacos around the world. Definitely search them up, get in one, and try this stuff.